autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease also called as ARPKD. Its alternative name previously it was known as infantile onset PKD to differentiate it from the adult onset variety. So if MCQ says ARPKD or they say infantile PKD, they are talking about the same entity. If you look at past papers in needs of a speciality, one of the MCQs did not use the word ARPKD. They said infantile PKD, which of the following are true except that is how the question had been framed. So alternative names are important. So infantile onset PKD is the other name. So it produces a dual organ disease. Actually, we believe that ARPKD and congenital hepatic fibrosis, they belong to the same spectrum. And in fact, majority of patients do have manifestation of one along with the other. And so it is strongly associated with congenital hepatic fibrosis. It is a dual organ disease. It is a potential MCQ point that you should remember. What is the strongest association of ARPKD? It is congenital hepatic fibrosis. Now, as the name says, inheritance is autosomal recessive. The gene is called as PKHD1, polycystic kidney hepatic disease 1 gene. That is the full form. It is present on short arm of chromosome 6. The chromosome number is not mentioned in Nelson. Please add it. Potential MCQ. It codes for a protein called as fibrocystin. This fibrocystin produces a multimeric complex with other proteins and it is involved in signal transduction. So, uh, it is uh, involved in intracellular signaling. So whenever there will be uh, abnormality in this protein or absence of this protein or truncated shortened protein, you will find the disease to manifest. And over 300 mutations are, have been known to occur. Mutations that modify fibrocystin, they are found to cause less severe disease than those which result in a shortened fibrocystin molecule. So truncating mutations are found to be more severe compared to modifying mutations. Please remember this key point. And about 10% patients may have a false negative genetic diagnosis, which means that they may have a new mutation which was previously unknown. And so uh, the patient may have disease, but the gene may not be the gene mutation may not be similar to the known gene mutations which have been there. There is a wide variety of gene mutations which can produce ARPKD. Now, what is the pathology of the disease? As the name says, uh, there will be involvement of the kidneys and there will be multiple cysts in the kidneys. In ARPKD, there are few points you need to remember. Both the kidneys will be enlarged in size. Both the kidneys will have little to no functional renal tissue and they will have multiple small cysts. Small cysts are present compared to ADPKD which has a macro cyst that is large cyst formation. So they have small cyst formation. Another important thing is the distinction between cortex and medulla is absolutely gone. You cannot distinguish cortex from medulla. This di distinction is maintained in the adult onset variety that is ADPKD kind of disease. So grossly speaking, both the kidneys are massively enlarged. There are multiple small cysts in both cortex and medulla. And as I said, cortical medullary differentiation cannot be done. Microscopically, you can, you can add this point above that cortex medullary differentiation is lost. On microscopy, there will be dilated ectatic collecting ducts radiating from the medulla to the cortex and there will be progressive interstitial fibrosis and tubular atrophy in advanced cases, particularly once, uh, in those patients where renal insufficiency is present. There is also involvement of liver and liver involvement will be in the form of pyloric proliferation, biliary ectasias and it will progress to fibrosis. Now clinical features, uh, antenatally it can manifest in the form of oligohydramnios and bilaterally large kidneys, postnatally what are the renal manifestations you will find? There can be bilateral flank masses in infancy and hematuria can develop in these patients. They may have Potter syndrome. They, uh, these patients can develop severe hypertension, oligouria and AKI. In fact, it is one of the uh, causes where hypertensive crisis-like features can appear even at one month of life. Then there will be renal function is impaired but may be initially normal in 20 to 30 percent patients. Eventually, renal dis, uh, insufficiency is going to happen, but certain children in, uh, in the first few weeks of life, they may have normal renal function also, provided their functioning renal tissue is present in both the kidneys. And increased risk of respiratory distress is there. There is spontaneous pneumothorax, which can happen. What is the cause of respiratory distress? Dual cause. There is pulmonary hypoplasia and large kidneys, which interfere with the diaphragmatic movement. 
and perinatal demise occurs in those with truncating mutations they have a high mortality they do not survive beyond the neonatal period and others who are who are survivors beyond the neonatal period or infancy they will develop end stage renal disease before 10 years of age now uh, the, certain children have a mixed hepatic and renal presentation which uh, those who have a mixed presentation they will have features of renal disease plus there will be development of portal hypertension hepatosplenomegaly uh, esophageal varices which can show bleeding in the patient and there will be development of ascending cholangitis which is often episodic. The, some of the children can also develop thrombocytopenia. Now which child will have which kind of presentation it depends upon the mutations involved and uh, it is found that certain children have severe renal as well as hepatic disease others have one disease severe other disease being mild. So uh, the dual organ phenotype says that severe kidney and severe liver involvement, both of them severe, are seen in about 40% cases. Severe kidney but mild liver involvement phenotype is seen in 20% patients. Mild kidney with severe liver involvement is seen in 20% and mild kidney, mild liver involvement is again seen in 20% patients. Severe kidney, severe liver are the ones which are associated with truncated mutations truncating mutations and they are the ones which have a high mortality in the neonatal period. This is the form which is going to have uh, modifying mutations, other may have somewhere in between kind of mutations and uh, these are the ones who will survive up to 10 to 15 years with the uh, best possible therapy. Now how you are going to make the diagnosis, obviously investigation of choice is ultrasound and ultrasound will show the presence of markedly enlarged and uniformly hyper ecogenic kidneys because there are uniform cysts present in both kidneys with poor corticomedullary differentiation on ultrasound. The diagnosis is strongly suggested by bilateral palpable flank masses in an infant, so infant onset disease, pulmonary hypoplasia, oligohydramnios, hypertension consistently there and the absence of renal cysts by sonography in the parents very very important. ADPKD you will find that the parents are also having first degree relatives are also having cysts but here the parents it is an autosomal recessive condition and parents usually do not have renal cysts and presence of hepatic findings or ductal plate abnormalities on liver biopsy can further support the diagnosis. Now what is the treatment? Treatment as you can well imagine it is primarily supportive, uh, ventilatory support will be needed, control of hypertension will be needed for hypertensive control, usually ACE inhibitors are the preferred agents, unilateral nephrectomy may be needed in selected cases, particularly if you have two kidneys and one kidney there is absolutely no functional renal tissue, other you find that there is some uh, renal tissue which is present, so unilateral nephrectomy and that enlarged kidney which has no renal tissue, it is interfering with movement of diaphragm in those scenarios. It depends from patient to patient, you can do unilateral nephrectomy, but that will only be individualized for the patient. And dual transplantation, both kidney and liver transplantation can be tried in these patients. So what is the condition where dual transplantation can be done? Answer is ARPKD potential MCQ point. Now what is the prognosis? Overall poor prognosis, 30% die in the neonatal period mainly due to pulmonary causes. And with optimum therapy and transplantation, more than 80% of post-infancy survivors can live up to 10 years of age and current 15 year survival rate is in with best possible thing including uh, dual transplant is 75 to 80 percent serpent particularly if they survive beyond infancy you need to understand that those who will die in infancy they will die those who survive beyond infancy it is actually found that they provided you do transplantation and give supportive therapy they are found to have a survival up to 15 years so beyond 15 years survival is not there Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.